Hi guys, my name is Kirsty and welcome back to Upside Down Books. Today we're going to be having a look at why you need to read The Ventriloquists by E. R. Ramsabor. Now this is a fantastic book that was sent to me by Harley Quinn Australia and I'm super excited to have read it. I did specifically request this one to review because I love historical fiction and I certainly love historical fiction that is written like this. Now this book is set in 1943 in Brussels, uh, which is in Belgium, and it is during the Nazi occupation of the country and it follows a group of characters that run a newspaper press, essentially. Now a lot of these characters have other jobs and other roles that they do, but they all come together to smuggle in newspapers and books and do all sorts of stuff during the war that perhaps the Nazis aren't super excited that they're doing. Now this book starts with a Nazi officer called August Wolf coming up to this group of characters, there's maybe about five or six of them, and telling them that they are actually going to make a newspaper that is Nazi propaganda and will basically slander the Allies and slowly brainwash the Belgian people into believing that actually the Nazis are what they want. I've never read a book before that's been entirely centered around propaganda and the sort of things that the Nazis did in this sense, so it was really cool to spend an entire book that's got quite a bit of content to it on this topic. I am a big fan of these sorts of books that aren't necessarily about the fighting because I have read a lot of books and being a history graduate also studied a lot about the fighting during World War II and World War I. I love it when we get people who explore the small stories of the smaller battles that are won on the home front. There are certainly a lot of other books like this in this sort of same vein of the home front battles and one that definitely comes to mind is Kristen Hanna's The Nightingale. So if you've read that and you love that you will hands down love this book. Now essentially these characters agree that they will die for a joke. They know that they can't say no and that they will have to publish something very different to what they would usually publish in their uh, newspaper. The newspaper is called Le Soir and the story is told in a couple of different perspectives. We are introduced to one of the main characters called Helen through a younger female character who is interviewing her and knows about her story and is asking her to tell them tell her more. We don't know the identity of this person who is interviewing until the very end of the book and it's a mystery that isn't very interesting at the beginning but by the end you're like this person is important and I really want to know who it is. Helen very slowly gives us this story but as she begins telling the tale the perspectives will swap to that particular character. So we have Aubryon who is the I guess the ringleader of the publication and he is the one that comes up with this genius plan. They agree to do the Nazis work but what they're actually going to do is make fun of the Nazis. So they go about creating two newspapers in the space of two weeks which is absolutely a ridiculous time frame and they are showing the Nazis the plans and the drafts of what the Nazis want to see but in in reality they're actually creating lots of other jokes that take the mickey out of Hitler and give the everyday Belgian man something to laugh about even if it's just for a day. It seems like a ridiculous thing for them to throw their lives away for but it is very brave and noble and they're gonna be killed at the end of it anyway because that's just how the Nazis work so they kind of figure we might as well go out with a bang. The things that I really loved about this was the character growth and complexity because we have so many characters but it's not confusing and it's always really interesting swapping between the perspectives. It is a unique book because there isn't a single perspective in this story that I didn't find interesting. It wasn't one of those books where I went, oh we're back to this perspective again, I wish we could just stay with this person. Each and every single one of them is interesting. Aubryon is this amazingly bright and brilliant character who is super eccentric and something akin to the Weasley brothers if you like that sort of character then you're going to lap up the pages with him. Helen is a young young child in the actual story. She's an old lady recounting this story now but she is disguised as an orphan boy to sell newspapers and get by after her parents are supposedly killed but she doesn't know what happens to them. We also have other characters such as one called Lada who is a prostitute who smuggles books and her love interest who is a judge. There's a couple of other characters too but those are sort of the interesting ones. I guess the other main character I should um, should talk about is Spiegelman who is I think where the well, he is where the title sort of comes from. He is a Jew who is not killed by the Nazis because of a particular talent he has. He is called the ventriloquist because, or the gastromancer, because he has a unique ability to forge letters and write letters in the words and tones of other people, which is super helpful for the Nazis and for other people who are trying to get away with cheating on their wives or their husbands or get away with things by having him do this forgery. He's recruited into this project to help write the story and He's a very torn up character, as so many of them are in this. So I think 
the main driving force of this story has to be the characters' own developments and battles because they are they have put everything on the line just to deliver this newspaper. They have to do so many things to make sure they have the resources in, the paper, the ink, the printing presses and the staff to get it done on time and there is such high stakes happening. So there's just about nothing I didn't like about this book. I was surprised. I was expecting to like this. I was not expecting to absolutely love it. This would be one of my favourite historical fiction books at the moment that takes on this sort of setting at the home front with the small stories that aren't really that well known and then you find an author who has written a brilliant story about it. So I would definitely be recommending this if that sounds like the kind of thing that you would enjoy. And if you have read Kristen Hanna's books and enjoyed them then I will guarantee you that this is a fantastic book. This came out on the 27th of August so it's been out for a month or two now so it's definitely out on the shelves for you to go and buy. I would love to know if any of you have read this so let me know your thoughts down in the comments below but other than that I will see you in my next video. Goodbye.